Today we're here in the Friends of the Town of Valley Railroad shop. We're looking here at Town of Valley Railroad number one. And one of the museum members here, Brian, is going to graciously give us a little history on this locomotive. Uh, so this is engine number one of the Tanana Valley Railroad, built in 1899 by the A.T. Porter Locomotive Works outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the serial number is 1,972nd of this locomotive type and class. It's an 040 locomotive weighing just under 10 tons when dry, or uh, sorry, uh, loaded. Uh, but right now at the moment we're going through the retubing process for our boiler. We've got tubes laying here which are going to be used. Um, the locomotive back at the heyday of the Tanana Valley was operated on wood due to wood being the main fuel source in the area. The Fairbanks area was just about nearly completely deforested based on the use for the railroad use, power and electrical and residential uses as well. Um, but as time went on, coal was actually brought to Fairbanks and we were able to use it at that time. Once the Alaska Railroad purchased the Tanana Valley Railroad and became the Chattanooga branch, engine number one was essentially retired. Um, the community put her on a static display in the downtown area. Um, and then when Pioneer Park was established, at the time it was the Alaska Centennial Exposition in 1967, she was brought to this park's location and was set on a static display out in the weather elements just outside of this, where this building would become. Uh, she sat there from 1967 up until the 1990s when members of the community uh, realized that this locomotive actually has some history to it and they got together and worked with the park in the borough to uh, put it into a shelter instead of being out in the open elements. And after realizing what they have and uh, seeing what support they could drive, the decision was made to go and restore the locomotive. And so the restoration process went through the 1990s. Finally, for the centennial of this locomotive, in July of 1999, the locomotive ran for the first time under her own power after so many decades. Um, of, course, of course, she needed some additional work, but she did run. And then slowly into the beginning of the early 2000s, after more, more work and a plan was put forward, the locomotive returned to passenger service for the first time and since then our members and volunteers have run her on special occasions throughout the summertime, uh, holidays such as Memorial Day, Fourth of July, Labor Day, and we have passenger service uh, those holidays as well. But if you wanted to come back, we've got, uh, we've got a great view for the, work, the workings of the locomotive, and you'll have to excuse me for I'm not the mechanical person. <laughs> Um, but we have here an 040 locomotive. We have the boiler here. Now this, uh, this is the original boiler's plate for the locomotive, but this boiler in particular is a, a reproduction in an aftermarket boiler. Um, the new boiler's plate is on the reverse side, but I love it. One of my favorites is that these rivets are not actually rivets. They're just b welded on pieces of metal to make it aesthetically look like rivets. I love that part. Um, this section here is just an additional part of casing as well as insulation to keep and retain the heat just a little bit. We have here the saddle tank, which the saddle tank can hold 130 gallons of water. The boiler itself can also hold 130 gallons of water. We can fill the water right here into the saddle tank through this little bit of a heavy lid. And then here we have the sand dome, which can be operated from inside the cab, running sand down onto the tracks allowing a ad little additional traction, especially when slick or icy. Um, key points here for under the locomotive here. Uh, of course, as with all pieces of machinery, w lubrication is key, and so we have lubrication points all throughout the locomotive. These brass fittings are the distinct locations however, throughout the running gears we have little holes, and those little holes throughout the locomotive to tell us where lubrication is needed. Of course we have the brake pads here and we've got uh, the springs. Now this locomotive being so tiny and all that fun stuff, she really likes to absorb the shock and the turning of the locomotive when she's going down the track. So you really do get to feel and hear the clickety-clack of the rail 
and that's always fun. Uh, the, one of the key projects that we have coming up is actually the replacement of the tires on the wheels. Now the wheels themselves are in good order, but the tires, it's a piece of metal that surrounds the wheel. Uh, that has gotten its use and has been worn down a little bit, and so that's one of our ongoing fundraising projects is to actually raise $50,000 to machine and replace the tires on these wheels. Um, key other things, of course, we have the drive shaft and the piston chamber for this locomotive. Um, we, we just had the piston caps off so you could see inside there. Unfortunately, they're back on. Um, here we have this, uh, the piece that brings the steam into the piston chamber. And under the piston chamber, of course, we have the release. And now this bar here, when operated, allows the gas and the con condensed water to release so that you don't have any ex excess pressure or any buildup causing issues when you're running, especially at steam pressure. Um, if we wanted to go into the cab here, of course she's broken down for her seasonal maintenance, but we get the gist of the majority here. Of course, the boiler and the firebox right there. The Grates for the and of course the uh, the door for the firebox are off at the moment, but you can get a decent view of the tubes there at the back. And we have, uh, unfortunately, some of the key components off in storage at the moment. But we have the water sight glass for the boiler. Um, we usually operate the water between the second and third nut, allowing space for the steam pressure to build and not creating too much cavity space for the water because we don't want to run out of steam when we're going down the tracks of course. Uh, we have the tricox. This is one way to test where the water level is if you don't can't see through the sight glass. Uh, if you have if you have water coming out of this tricock, of course it's a little too much water. If you have water coming out of this tricock, you're perfect, but if you don't have water coming out of this one, you have an issue. Because we always want to keep the, prom uh, the most water uh, for safety reasons and for proper running. Uh, we have here the Johnson bar. The Johnson bar is the mechanism that allows us to operate the locomotive in the forward or reverse positions. Each part of the Johnson bar has five notches allowing five different speed and accelerations in the forward and reverse position. And of course we have the manual handbrake mechanism the air brake mechanism. This piece here, this little hand here, this is what allows you to release the uh, condensation in the piston chamber so you can open that up. Uh, this bar right here is for the sand dome to operate that. And of course we have, when the whistle is on the locomotive, we have the whistle here and we have the bell. Um, a couple of other key things for the, on the fireman side of the locomotive, he uh, usually has a steam pressure gauge right here to tell what's going on pressure-wise. And then when he realizes that he needs to add water, he can use his me uh, mechanisms here to add water as he needs. Um, and then if he needs to release steam or do a blowdown, the blowdown mechanism is underneath the main body of the boiler underneath the locomotive. That was that large uh, pipe and valve that I saw? Correct, yes. And boy golly, does it get loud when that thing's on. <laughs> um, our locomotive here uses link and pin couplers for the main part, the locomotive connecting to the tender. The tender is currently out in storage at the moment. After that, however, we use normal couplings uh, and just for Ease, we don't do the link and pin at that point. And then to go from the locomotive to the tender, we have a metal plate uh, that allows safe walking across and to allow um, the transfer of coal into the firebox. Again, if I'm making confusion, please let me know because I'm not really the most mechanical person, I'm sorry. Um, let's see, do you have any questions about the locomotive? Well, if uh, people want to come take a ride on this little train, uh, how do people do that? Um, they, visit, uh, they can visit our Facebook and our website to see when we're going to operate. Unfortunately, for the 2021 season, we are going to be down both for COVID reasons and for maintenance reasons. 
Uh, we're taking the opportunity this year to replace and work on the track around the park. Our two trestle bridges are going to get a facelift and they're going to be worked on. But in a normal season, uh, you can visit our website and our Facebook, see when we're going to operate. We, our usual hours of operation are 11 to 5 during the daytime. And you come into the main part of the, uh, main part of the lobby, buy a ticket, $2 for an adult, $1 for a child or senior. And then you um, go around to the back platform and wait for the train to come. And what is your uh, address? What is the address for the Facebook group and uh, uh, website? The website is TananaValleyRailroad.org and the Facebook is Friends of the Tanana Valley Railroad. Uh, you can find us on Facebook or Instagram with the at FTBRR. And um, do you need donations? Are you looking for donations for your locomotive? Always looking for donations and uh, sponsorships. If anyone would like to contribute or make a donation, they can be mailed to P.O. Box 84498, Fairbanks, Alaska 99708. Uh, or you can actually make a donation on our website, uh, TananaValleyRailroad.org. And all of our donations are greatly appreciated. Well, thank you so much for that, Brian. Much appreciated. And see you folks, this is a genuine piece of Alaska history right here. I highly recommend that when you're in the Fairbanks area, you get in touch with the folks here at the town of Valley Railroad and come see some real history. <laughs>